Okay, thank you everyone, and uh, thank you, Helmer, for the introduction. Yeah, I'm going to talk about so called uh, Biosense API. That's, uh, so you know, this is a, it is an API, right? So what we try to build is really is kind of like a, try to build like a unified API for any Biosense. Biosense really means bio entities, it can be gene, uh, variants, disease, pathway, or any, all this. We try to build the API for that. And because this session is about the standard, about to reduce the repetitive work out of our bioinformaticians workflow. So in terms of solution for us, we, we think, we, we try to, we really believe in the APIs. We think every repetitive work in every this like a workflow, it should be abstracted out and someone should make it like an API, hopefully nobody, nobody will repeat that part of work so that you can focus on your specific work. That will be ideal, and that's what we try to do. Of course, I recognize that we probably won't be uh, abstract everything into API. You still need to do your own, um, your own, uh, own algorithm, but in terms of like a, a data wrangling, for example, you're doing all kinds of a wrangling about the, like parsing the parsing file from NCBI ensemble from, I don't know how many people pass it, like a clean bar XML, or this like a big file, big, very complex to file. Basically, everybody's gonna repeat that. That's what we try to uh, avoid. So, um, as this graph basically they represent, like even this graph is a very simple, simplified representation of uh, all our biological knowledge. So, it's a, basically, it's like a hellball. And we typically, we, we can represent this kind of a knowledge in a relational database. That's almost like you store one, string of the data from the hellboy into the into a table. And another way in the documented database, you basically take the, each node and collect all the nodes, connect to this one, and then you store it in a documented data table. And another other way is like a, you basically store like a, in a key value pair or the like RNA or RDF triples that basically just store every little piece of the this hellboy into your database. It's all the different kind of a representation and but we all try to represent this uh, biological knowledge network. So I didn't mention the graph database because it's just a graph database is just, I think the underlying storage magazine is just behind this uh, either relational, either document or key value pair. So I didn't, it's a, it's a, I didn't mention this as another alternative. So anyway, so we pick, basically picked a document a database because the, we want to represent the heterogeneous data like a gene annotation, variant annotation, very heterogeneous and a lot of data from the different resources. That's why we uh, try to uh, pick this type of a database to store the data. And here give you an exam example about the gene annotation and the variant annotation represented in a, in a JSON document, right? So left-hand side is a gene annotation. So you can see the annotation, you, you have like a, this internal underscore ID as an identifier for this document. And this, in this case, it's the NCBI gene. It could be ensemble gene. And then you have a bunch of like attribute nested under this, uh, this document. For the right-hand side, that's a variant document. You have the, uh, we have the HGBS ID here as, uh, as ID. Then we have collecting like Cosmic, ClinBar, uh, Exact, the 1000 Genome, everything uh, related to this gene under this document. And of course, the real world, that, that will be the real dot gene document, right, for one gene. We aggregate a lot of stuff into the, into the same gene. Basically, anything about this particular gene, we, we try to aggregate it into one document. Okay, now we have this kind of a mechanism to, uh, to put this into work to make, make sure the data are always up to date. And we have the individual, individual parser to load the data from each source and then merge them together, index in an elastic search. And on top of that, there's a Python tornado layer to build the REST API. Nothing surprised, but we, we try to optimize this as much as possible so to make the API is really uh, high performance and really responsive for the uh, for developers to use. And okay, that's, yeah, that's basically the end product is a performance API. So um, we first developed the mygene.info, that meant to be a gene API. So you can see here, if you want to get the annotation about gene, you basically just need to go to this, you, this endpoint and you just need to know the gene ID, either uh, ensemble gene ID or uh, NCBI gene ID. You don't really need to pick the which, uh, which database you want to choose. The only thing you need to know is just the gene ID. That's sufficient. Of course, you can also do the query, query for like any gene match like a certain term. Um, 
And we actually, just uh, this morning, we announced that uh, this V3 API is already live. So we, you can see some uh, certain improvement over the V2. Uh, you are welcome to check out. Of course, the v, V2 will still be there for a long time. So that uh, just uh, until everybody is migrated to the v, uh, V3. Really not that much of a uh, change. Only changed a few. Uh, there's a few back uh, incompatible change. Yeah. Okay, so for the myvariant.info, that's we created a little bit later, released last year, and we have this uh, variant um, endpoint. It's basically it's follows the same pattern. You have a variant ID, uh, you can query by the HGVS ID, and you can do the also, also do the query. And also you can do all the uh, post using the, uh, batch query using post. Okay, so as I mentioned, we try to build the APIs, right? And, um, and also we try, what we try to do, we do believe this, like we want to do one thing and we want to do this one thing really well. So we really uh, try to make this very easy to use, especially for the developer. So um, first, as you already saw, we just have two endpoints and very easy. And nobody need to register, nobody need to sign in, and there's an no API key, we just, um, you just use it. Um, and that's very important it's because as an as a API, you want it, this can be used in any uh, pipeline, any web applications, right? No hassle. And also, it's uh, made a very de uh, developer friendly because it is a target to developers. And as you see, all of this, like JSMP, course, HTTPS, message pack, HTTP compression, hashing, they are like a useful stuff for the uh, for the bioinformatics developer, especially for the web developers. If you, you want to use our API in a live web application as our, a lot of uh, uh, users do, so that's very important. We also support the JSON-LD, and if you are into the like, uh, linked data and explore like uh, some uh, cross API uh, and data linkage stuff, and I think JSON-LD is a very nice thing to have. And we also have the Python R clients that's we officially uh, supported. It. And there's also a passion, a very uh, passionate user created a JavaScript client for myvariant. It's also available. And you just search my gene and my variant in this two uh, repository. Okay, so um, so also I think uh, if, you, if we want to develop this API, we want to cover as much as we can. So far for the gene, Gene API, we support uh, pretty much like all species available from uh, NCBI. As long as there's at least one gene annotated for this species, it should be included in our API. And that's about 17,000 species for more than 15 uh, million genes. And um, total, we have about like a 200 annotation field for those genes. And for my variant, we uh, have uh, about uh, more than 300 million of uh, variants right now collected from all the major resources and CleanVar, DBNSP, and DBSNP, 1000 Genome, all these uh, all these data sources. And we have collectively uh, 500 um, annotation fields for those uh, for those uh, variants. And it, okay. And we also notice uh, also and um, think as a keep data up to date is really important. So you don't really need to think about the, okay, is this my version, uh, and, and it, what's, what's the version I use for my gene? If you do the request to my gene, you, you always get the latest uh, annotations from the source data. And so for my gene, we actually update it weekly, very tight, um, um, very tight update schedule uh, to synchronize with NCBI Ensemble and all other data sources. And my variant.info currently we do a monthly, and because uh, CleanVar I think is the most frequently updated uh, um, variant annotation, they update it monthly. That's why we want to do them monthly. And we're actually gonna, uh, we just released a V3 of my gene, and we're gonna have another new data build for my variant.info, and in just, a, I think it's just about this couple of days, so. Um, yeah, um, as an API, because it's a remote, people are probably um, like afraid of the performance, right? So we, we make it like a really high performance and scalable. And as you can see, those are the real queries. And most of our queries actually return within uh, 30 uh, milliseconds right now. And uh, that's for the my gene uh, real query. And also uh, we have this, like a, so far I think we saw like this uh, one, particular, one particular day, I think it's a, Christmas 2014, just one or two users just hit us like a crazy, like five million hits per day. And uh, while everybody is on vacation, I'm on vacation, quite glad 
our, our server is just okay. So we are, we are really happy to this people, uh, this user doing like stress test for us. Yeah, yeah. So okay, and, and this one, I, I, this one actually is a, uh, is a live user actually happened right now. And I just uh, copied like a minute ago uh, before this talk. And so right now you can see the, this, this is from Google Analytics. You can see the active user right now is like a six, over 600 right now. I meant to like a, show you the real ticking number, but this is not my computer. I, that's why I, you see me come back and paste this figure to this slides. Okay, so and we also want to make this a very uh, high availability. And for my gene released earlier, we have over the last year, we have uh, almost like a, always, always there. I don't really remember it's, it's ever been done in past year. My variant.info, I think we released it later, I think is pretty, yeah, we, we stopped in like a one or two times. It's almost always available. At the very beginning, we just do need to do some of the stuff like for the upgrade, but it's a very, very reliable service, very reliable, very fast service. And also there's a bunch of uh, our uh, good collaborators and using the, this our service in their live applications. And for example, my Gene and Monarch, Civic, and also I, uh, I know Suki is here, Monica is here. We worked on the like uh, uh, Hackson earlier this year, tried to get the my Gene and my variant track into the JBrowse. That's really awesome. And we really like to, Collaborated with you guys to make this uh, work so much better, uh, better and better. Um, okay, and also I think as a, a even more user actually just use uh, our API in their like a daily analysis pipelines, and uh, and also, also I guess some people just also just want to store the just as a quick way of cache all the gene annotation, variant annotation locally, so that they, you don't have to go through all these files to do all the parsing. That's totally fine. Although we we do think as a live API, and yeah, we will, we would like to people use it in the live live applications. But however you li like to use, as long as this uh, provide a convenience for you. Okay, so this is just to give you a recent usage stats, and that's from January this year to June, right before this conference. I think we have a pretty good month. From April to June, we have over 10 millions uh, in one month, and over. Pretty much every month we have all about like 3,000 3, unique, uh, unique IPs, and we total have like over 40 million requests in six months. And here you can see there's some uh, distribution of uh, some 40% from the my gene Python client, 14, 14 from the R client, and uh, another 40% 40, 40 is uh, like a direct uh, cause. And also, um, also we also track the by GPS because it's uh, like uh, our internal applications. So. Um, this is my variant.info recent usage stats, and uh, we, you can see uh, we have five million requests in six months, and also pretty good so far. And so now we have the by gene and my variant. So we start to think about how to how to generalize this to other entities. For example, you can generalize to disease, generalize to uh, uh, to drug chemicals, right? That's what we are thinking about. So we we start to develop this so-called biosense SDK. So we try to ab um, abstract this data build, web API, cloud de compo uh, deployment, this three component, all these things here are common between all the different entities. So we want to come up with this SDK so that for us, we can quickly deploy uh, another, another API and also can, for user, if you have a new uh, Bison ent entity type, you can develop your API like, uh, like what we have. Um, okay, so far, yeah, we have this Bison.io domain registered. Uh, you can have the gene variants, and we actually approve a concept. We build this as a species, and yeah, I don't think I'm going to go into details about a species API, but I just want to say very minimum code you can need to build the uh, species API, and we are in the process of building drug, comp drug and a chemical compound, and also planning to build the disease one, and. At the end, I think just the summary slides, I think this is what we try to provide for the Biosings API project is a collection of data, data API. This is for the data, also a framework for building the new APIs. That's uh, kind of like a, as a providing as a software, as a service for the, for the user. So if you have a new type of Biosings, so let us know. And uh, if the data is not so big, we can probably just host it for you. And otherwise, we can help you to build your own APIs. And I would like to thank our team and added, uh, it's a collaboration between the, our uh, scripts 
team led by uh, me and Andrew, and uh, Kevin Shane is in, the, in this audience, and also from the uh, Shang's group from University of Washington. And I'm gonna give another talk at the Tech Track, and also um, we have a poster presented by uh, Kevin and, and at the ISMB. Thanks for the BD2K funding for us. That's, that's all the source code.